When I was testing Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 in the review of which you can find on this channel, I was really impressed. Not only it weighs a little more than 1.5 kg, which is extremely small weight for a system with a powerful processor and a discrete graphics card, but it also managed to run even the newest games at medium high and even ultra settings, and that's not to mention everything else, like build quality, materials, trackpad and the battery life. And all this for a very nice price of course. But it had only one drawback, the size. Rather small screen size which for me was not very suitable. So, mid is big brother with a diagonal of 15 inches, more powerful hardware and for still the same attractive price. Of course, if we consider gaming laptops. And today we're gonna find out whether Asus was able to provide the same combination of portability, efficiency and autonomy. At the same time, we will find out whether a gaming laptop can replace a full-fledged PC not only for games, but also for work and study. So, be aware of the world of technology with the Lemon Channel. Let's get started, enjoy watching! The G15 Secret Weapon is its powerful gaming processor. The version in the review is the 8-core AMD Ryzen 9 6900H with the prefix S, which stands for mobile. In the comments under the video about the G14, I was corrected that it should have been mentioned because the mobile hardware is smaller in comparison to the regular one. So there is a 35W processor instead of the usual 45W. However, I think this is clear because for the sake of portability you have to sacrifice something because you can't just put your usual desktop computer in a backpack and go anywhere. This way, gaming laptops are kind of compromised when you need portable but still powerful devices compared to regular laptops. However, you shouldn't be guided simply by the name of the hardware here because they're different bundles, cooling can fail and so on and so forth. That's why in each video I show you the tests so you can compare the performance with other laptops. Over the years, this model was released in different specifications, from Ryzen 7 to already mentioned Ryzen 9, along with different graphics cards. From RTX 3050 and up to RTX 3080 Ti, which of course affects the price. In my opinion, today we have the optimal version in terms of hardware as well as the budget of less than $2000. With a 6900 processor and an RTX 3070 graphics card at 80 w with the overlock up to 100, along with 16GB of RAM and 1TB of storage. Everything is packed into a rather small casing, only 2cm thick and weighing about 2kg which really looks compact. However, how it affects the cooling we'll discuss a little later. After all, we have two colors. Snow White, which visually makes the laptop even thinner, but with black bezels on the screen. And the standard black version made of aluminum magnesium alloy which gives the design rigidity, but at the same time makes the laptop light and pleasant to the touch. However, the main design features of this lineup, as well as in the version with a smaller screen size, are the ergo lift hinges and LEDs on the front cover. And here everything is not so clear. On the one hand, the hinges are really convenient when working at a desk, as the cover leads the keyboard, creating a slight angle for comfortable typing. But if you move the laptop on your knees, this hinge, or rather the so-called leg, starts digging into your feet, creating a problem for those who are used to work on the couch. And this is worth taking into account. The situation is similar with the LED panel because it has almost no practical function. You can display the percentage of charge, notifications and other test bar activity on it. Or play some animation, text and even activate the virtual assistant. Or rather a pad, which serves more for entertainment, especially with mini games. Well, let it be. However, this panel does drain the battery and in some public places without recharging, for example in a cafe, its use is questionable. And at home or somewhere at work with charging, well it also doesn't make much sense. Bearing in mind that for such a feature you have to overpay and you still do not see it in front of the monitor. But for the review still looks good. Otherwise there are cheaper versions without this LED panel, but the perforation on the lid will still remain. By the way, since we mentioned charging, there are rumors that this beast can live more than 10 hours without recharging. Which may be true, but with a Full HD matrix. I have a version with QHD which showed a little more modest results, but no less impressive. As in the battery test laptop Mac, the laptop survived 8 hours and 48 minutes, that is almost 9, which is twice as much as the competitors. 
and it should be enough for one studying or working day, taking into account that it's possible to recharge via USB Type-C. Slower than from a standard power supply, but for usual tasks it will be enough. Without the test in a standard work mode, the laptop lasts at roughly the same amount of time, more than 8 hours. In the games, the laptop survived more than an hour, which is also a decent result, because who would ever think of playing games without recharging? And I was playing RDR, but I'm a blogger and that was only for the test. The laptop has 200 watt power supply for that, which both boosts the performance and has a quick charge function up to the 50% in around half an hour. And the closer you get to 100, the more the charging speed slows down. As for the screen, the laptop comes with both Full HD and QHD metrics. I can't say much about Full HD except what's to be found on the internet, and that is that the screen is far from ideal. The coverage is sRGB 69% and Adobe RGB 52%, plus the screen itself is dim. The color reproduction is not really good, but it's 144Hz. In other words, the screen is not good for working in Photoshop, color correction and graphics. But for the games, this color reproduction should be enough. In addition, the absolute plus is the increasing battery life. Again, if you believe the test on the internet. I have a version with QHD, and here I can say with color reproduction, brightness and other, things are much better than with the Full HD version. sRGB is 99.8. Adobe RGB is 83% and DCI-P3 is 99.7%. However, this is still not enough for working with colors because of the color deviation. On the left side of the screen you can see how it should be, and on the right side how it is with the Asus Zephyrus G15. Now I understand why Mi Notebook Pro, while having worse hardware, with unproductive cooling costs more, as the prefix Pro is justified by the quality of the screen for those who really need it. But it doesn't mean that the screen is bad, QHD is just fine, for the majority, that is 99.9% .9 of people, it will be enough. For normal work, video editing, amateur photoshop and of course the games, it's more than enough. Plus, recently they released a new version with more powerful hardware and better screen refresh rate. In my version it's 165Hz, now you can find 240 if you're an esports player. In this version, they also brought back the camera, which seems to be unnecessary in gaming laptops, but because of massive going remote, it was decided to bring it back. Also adding face unlock, but removing the fingerprint scanner from the power button, which in my opinion of a person who constantly tapes the camera is a very controversial option. But the last year's models are still there. So Asus as always gives a choice, both in price as well as in hardware and functionality. For the rest, the laptop is identical. On the right side there is only one USB-A port and micro USD card reader. But on the left side there is a plenty of ports, starting with two Thunderbolt 4 with charging, one more USB 3.0, full-fledged HDMI and ending with an internet connector RJ45 and proprietary power connector, which in this lineup of laptops laptops is placed in the middle. On the top of the casing is a keyboard with trackpad, standard for this gaming series with no numpad. With a mono backlighting, so you can change it, but it will light all the keys in one color. The G14 was probably one of my favorite keyboards, and the 15 diagonal version is very similar. The click is comfortable and with a key travel of 1.7mm, plus there are keys for volume control and microphone mute. There are three of them for the maximum sound quality and enter to the standard Asus utility. On the sides we can find the speakers, which visually fills up the increased empty space, and on the practical side provides a good sound quality. Of course they're lacking depth and the quality of bass because of the size, but you can play or watch movies without headphones. As for the touchpad, it's 20% larger than on previous G15 generation, which sometimes causes the hands to touch the trackpad when typing. However, it's not vital and there were no false responses. The touchpad itself has a glass cover so that your fingers glide comfortably and it perfectly reads the gestures supported by Windows 11 and Windows 10. So it's safe to say that the era of bad touches on Windows laptops is over, and at this point I think it's time to move on to tests. To start with, I think it's worth saying that there are several performance presets. From silent performance to manual with turbo modes, which affect the performance with laptop overlocking, noise and cooling. The most effective is manual with maximum speed, but the noise is unbearable even with headphones. You won't be able to play for a long time, but you can render some fragments of video or graphics easily. 
so I was testing it in a normal turbo mode. And in Signbench and Multicore mode, the laptop scored 14,776 points. In Geekbench, the laptop scored even less than 10,000 in Multicore mode and 1,400 points in a single core. While in 3D Mark and Time Spy mode, the laptop scored 10,096 points. But all this is dry tests. It's much better to check the gaming laptop in games. So, the first one is Cyberpunk. High settings with ray tracing turned on and we get 3040 FPS. Not so much, but for the story game is enough. If you want more, of course turn off the ray tracing and get more than 50 FPS. And if you also lower the resolution to Full HD instead of 1400p, we get all 6070 FPS with ultra settings. And I think it's more than playable. In RDR2 with high settings and 2K resolution we see 50 FPS. When lowering to Full HD you can get even 70. And the same situation is almost everywhere. FPS boost by reducing the resolution is 10 or more frames in every game. The Witcher at 2K with maximum resolution gives 60 FPS, that's quite good for such a detailed and large game. And my favorite Apex Legends with high settings gives more than 100 FPS, which is very important for multiplayer FPS game. The same thing is with Fortnite and the CSGO of the same competitive shooters. In the first game with maximum settings we see above 100 FPS, and in CSGO even more. With maximum settings and 2K resolution, FPS goes up to 200. In games like these, the screen with 165 or 240 Hz is just perfect. Moreover, the laptop is not too noisy. Well, of course it's heard, but obviously not as loud as in manual mode with the coolers at maximum. But it starts to overheat because of it. The graphics card reaches 100 degrees and the processor about 90 degrees Celsius, which is certainly a lot, but not critical. And all that is thanks to liquid metal, an evaporation chamber, and an advanced cooling system with six copper tubes. All in all, it's the perfect laptop for gaming. Yeah, it has limited hardware compared to to a desktop PC, but it's enough to run any latest game with high or even ultra settings with an acceptable FPS. And if you lower the resolution or graphics, the games run perfectly and this laptop would be enough for several years for most people. For example, many people buy a Nintendo Switch, they don't really care about graphics. The main thing is portability and comfort, and all this is available at this laptop and with good performance and at a reasonable price, of course if you manage to find it at a recommended price. In general, the laptop perfectly copes with its tasks, both gaming and everyday ones. In work, lives longer than most competitors, about 8 hours, as a good screen, if you don't take into account the Full HD version. And in general, it feels great. Well, that's all for today, thanks for watching until the end. Leave your comments about the review or the laptop itself. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out any updates. See you soon, bye!